Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about creating a small bedding area. And I think that this is gonna be the first video of a few. I kinda of wanna show you guys the progress throughout this season and maybe into next season. But in this first video, I really just wanted to kind of go over the initial steps in creating a bedding location. And this just happens to be a hinge cut bedding area. And then at the end of the video, I, I wanted to show you guys a natural bedding area, just to kind of show you uh, what, what the deer want to bed in on this property naturally and kind of how we're going to try to mimic that with this bedding area. And first and foremost, guys, the most important thing when doing any type of chainsaw work is chainsaw safety. Make sure that you're wearing chaps, helmet, glasses, steel-toed boots, gloves. Uh, make sure you're doing it with somebody else. You, you don't want to be doing this by yourself in case you have an accident. If you are not comfortable using a chainsaw or, or dropping these larger trees, don't do it it is not worth getting hurt over. So again, if you are comfortable, make sure you're following all the safety guidelines. If you're not comfortable, hire the workout. So the very first step in creating one of these bedding areas is deciding on a location. Where are we going to put this bedding area? And everyone's property is going to be laid out a little bit different. So we're just gonna kinda of go over a few general things that you need to keep in mind when you're putting in one of these bedding areas. And the first thing you kind of got to realize when, when trying to understand deer bedding is kind of how deer choose their beds. And the biggest difference is between the way bucks choose their beds and the way does choose their beds. Both bucks and does like very similar conditions. They like thick, secure bedding. But the does, they like to bed in the first available thick cover as it relates to food. So they like to bed as close to food as possible. Bucks, on the other hand, they want to have the most secure cover in the area. So and that could be close to food, that could be you know, 200 yards away, 300 yards away. They want to find a very remote location where they have the best security possible. And most of the time that means it's going to be away from food. There's a lot of stress around those food sources. There's more does, there's more predators. So most of the time those bucks like to be away from food. This particular bedding area is gonna be tucked in pretty close to a food plot, so I expect this to be more used by a doe family group. The next thing you really need to think about when deciding where you're going to be putting these bedding areas is how are you going to access your property. You do not wanna be putting these bedding areas right up next to your access because you just have a higher probability of spooking deer if you do that. If your access is along the perimeter of your property and you're putting these bedding areas right next to your access, you just have a really good chance of bumping deer as you exit the stands after your morning hunt and then as you're going into your stands for the afternoon hunt. So just try to visualize your access and, and just think that if a deer was bedded in a certain location, would they be able to see you entering and exiting your stands. And if, and if they can, then it's probably not the best spot to have a bedding area. This particular location is about 80 yards away from my access, which is located behind the camera. And there's also several rolls in the terrain, so I can get around this spot during the hunting season with a low probability of spooking the deer in this location. Now that you've decided on a location for your bedding area, the next step is to actually create it. And there's one thing that most bedding areas have in common and that's that there's quite a bit of sunlight hitting the forest floor. So the very first step to creating your bedding area is to drop the mature trees in that location. And there's a few reasons why we need to be dropping these mature trees. The, the, the first and most obvious reason is because we need to have full sunlight coming into this area, just like we do a food plot. We need to have sunlight hitting the forest floor because we want to have as much regeneration as possible. Remember, in the fall, deer want to bed in thick, secure bedding cover. And in order to have thick, secure bedding cover, you need to have sunlight hitting the forest floor. If you don't have sunlight, you're not gonna get new growth. Without new growth, you're not gonna have a thick, nasty bedding area. So if you're someone that has nothing but mature trees and you don't really have much in the six to eight inch range, like this maple here, it's gonna take your bedding area a little bit longer to establish because unfortunately, you're pretty much gonna be starting from scratch from a new growth perspective. You're still gonna have cover in the area when you drop those larger trees, when you have those trunks on the ground and you have those tops on the ground, but it's gonna take a little bit longer for that new growth to start growing when, when, when you basically have a closed canopy woods. And if that sounds like your property, then I really encourage you guys to stick around to the end because I just want to show you what the previous landowner of this property did. He took out a section of trees and he just kind of let it go. And over time, it just kind of grew up and that's where the deer really like bedding now on this property. So he didn't do any hinge cutting. He didn't do anything like that. He just cut down trees and then just kind of let it go. The second reason why you want to be dropping your large trees first is because they can destroy your hinge cut bedding area if you're able to hinge cut on your property. 
That's what we did here. We, we hinge cut about a quarter of an acre. What we did, we dropped the large trees first, but let's say we did not drop those trees. If we had gone in and completed all of our hinge cut work, but left all the large trees standing, they would survive for a couple years, but over time, if we didn't drop those large trees, they would fill in the canopy and they would choke out our hinge cuts. Remember, these hinge cuts are on the ground and they need sunlight to survive. And so if, if we don't remove the canopy, eventually that's gonna close up, blocking the sunlight, killing our hinge cuts. So regardless, we have to drop those trees. But if we wait to drop those trees until after our hinge cuts, we're gonna be risking destroying the hinge cut bedding area that we just created. Those big trees are going to come down and they're going to come down hard. If they hit your hinge cuts, they're gonna snap them like twigs. So the first step in the actual creation of a bedding location, whether you have a closed canopy woods, nothing but mature trees, or you're gonna to try to hinge cut, is you need to drop those mature trees first. So once you have those larger, more mature trees down on the ground, if you're someone that has nothing but mature trees, the next step is, is really just kind of make sure that there is pathways through so you can walk through easily, you have openings in there, you just wanna make sure that you can walk through that area pretty easily. You have multiple entrances, multiple exits. That way, if a deer goes in there and lays down, it doesn't ever feel trapped. If you're someone that has smaller to medium-sized trees and you're able to hinge cut them, this is the time where you really wanna start visualizing how you want this bedding area to look. And the conditions that we're trying to create with this hinge cut bedding area are no different. We wanna make sure that these deer can move in and out of this bedding area, have multiple ways in, multiple ways out. We wanna make sure that these deer feel safe from everything on the outside of the bedding area, but we also wanna make sure that they know that if something comes in from one side of the bedding area, that they can escape out the backside. Or if something comes in from the backside, then they can escape out the front. And there's really no exact science as to how you have to be doing these hinge cut bedding areas. You really just need to be replicating the conditions that a deer wants. And so I'll kind of tell you how I've done it in the past and how we did this one for, more from a design perspective. So for the most part, we have kind of a central hub area and then we are hinging trees away from this central hub. And then we are making sure that we have multiple entrances and exits within the cuttings that we have fallen away from the center. And again, this allows deer to have multiple ways in and out of this area. And they feel secure because all those treetops are now blocking the outside of the bedding area. So if you crouch down, get down to deer level in the middle of this bedding area, all you're going to see on the outside is treetops and you're also going to have multiple ways in and out. Again, I want to emphasize that there is no exact science to this. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. For the most part, I do not fight tree lean. So what that means is every once in a while, I'm gonna have a tree that does not want to go the way that I would like it to go. And I, I just let it fall the way it wants to fall. If it falls in a way that I think I can make it work for my bedding area, I will leave it there. If it falls in a way that I don't think it's gonna be beneficial to my bedding area, then I'll just cut it down and block it up and get it out of there. Another tip I have for you guys, if you're gonna be trying a hinge cut bedding area, is just like we did in the very beginning with dropping the larger trees first, I like to hinge the larger trees before hinging the smaller trees. And it's for the same reason. If you're hinging smaller trees, and then you're trying to bring a large tree on top of those smaller hinge cuts, there's a pretty good chance that that larger tree will come down pretty hard and break through those smaller hinge cuts. And the best way to get a hinge cut to survive is to have as slow of a fall as possible. So with those larger hinge cuts, those ones in the, in the eight inch range, you wanna bring them down very slow. And one way you can do that is by bringing them down through or bringing them down with some smaller trees. The slower the tree comes down, the greater the chances you have of that hinge cut surviving and not snapping off as it hits the ground. So those are two big reasons and why you wanna be hinging your larger trees first. As far as how high to cut when hinging trees, uh, I do a little bit of everything. I normally start with lower, more waist high hinge cuts and there's a couple reasons. The first is because you need a foundation to put the rest of your hinge cuts on and every location is gonna be different depending on the topography of the area. But if you started with a higher shoulder to head height hinge cut, then every tree that you bring down after that is going to also be shoulder to head height. And if that's the case, if, if you took a knee down in that bedding area or you took a seat down in that bedding area, got down on deer level and you looked out, you're going to still be able to see for quite a ways. A deer is not gonna feel very safe because it's not gonna have that screen around the outside of the bedding area. So the second reason why you wanna be making sure that you're doing lower cuts first, or, or at least around the perimeter of your bedding area, is because you wanna have that screening around the outside. You wanna make sure that when a deer is laying down in your bedding area, that it can't see out and you can't see in. 
as I move to the interior of the bedding area, my hinge cuts do get gradually taller. They range anywhere from belly button height to chest height to shoulder height. As you can see, this one behind me is, is a little bit lower than my shoulder. Now I do recognize that this particular hinge cut that was done a little bit higher, uh, once this tree starts sprouting new growth and growing towards the sunlight, it is gonna be a little bit more difficult for the deer to get at that new growth. However, there's gonna be so much regeneration in this particular area that the deer are not gonna be hurting for browse. So a high hinge cut every once in a while or a higher hinge cut every once in a while is not going to destroy your bedding location. So to sum up the steps on, on how to actually create one of these bedding locations, the very first step is to drop the larger trees. You wanna make sure you're getting full sunlight in the area and you wanna make sure you're dropping those large trees first because if you, if you drop them last, they're going to destroy everything you did with your hinge cuts. Uh, the, the, ne the next step is to really go in there before you do any hinge cutting and try to look at which way these trees want to fall on their own. To kind of visualize how you want to make this hinge cut bedding area. How are deer going to come in and out of this location? Try to make sure that you're dropping trees in a manner to allow multiple exits and multiple entrances. And finally, try to make sure that you're bringing down the larger trees first uh, without getting them hung up. You want to see if you can bring them through other trees to soften the landing. And then you can bring down those smaller trees on top of the larger trees. So those are the initial steps to creating a bedding area. Again, this is gonna be the first video of several that we're going to make. We still have to come back in here later in the year to block up some of the larger trees, create more entrances and exits. We also need to come back and make some individual deer beds. Uh, and, and we'll make a video on that later in the year. But right now I really want to show you guys a natural bedding area on this property, just to kind of give you guys an idea as to what we're trying to recreate with this location. All right guys, so here is the natural bedding area on this property right there kind of walk into it here in a minute and the first thing we'll do here is we'll kind of walk around it from the side uh, just to show you guys just what it looks like from the outside give you guys an idea as to what your bedding areas will look like you know after a few years Again, this was not a man-made bedding area, or, or I guess not man-made uh, bedding area created just to have a bedding area. The previous owner uh, took out a lot of trees in this location, and over time this just grew up and got really thick, and now the deer love spending time here during the day. This particular bedding location is not very big. It's probably only about a quarter of an acre in size, so it's not gonna hold a lot of deer, but during the hunting season, when there's a lot of hunting pressure, there are always deer bedded in this spot. So now let's kind of follow this deer trail and we will go inside the bedding area. Just giving you guys a kind of a look at what it's like inside and see if we can find a few beds. All right, I see our first bed here. Uh, looks like a larger bed, so it, it could be a buck. I, I don't think it's a buck. It, it's most likely a mother doe and her fawn's uh, beds could be around here somewhere. Um, maybe over there on the other side of this brush. Uh, I'm not sure I'll have to get a closer look, but this is kind of what you want in your bedding locations. You got thick cover all around and you have openings and ways to get from one opening to another. And so if you're someone that's looking to create a bedding area on your property, um, it does take time because you need to have time for these shrub trees and all this junk to kind of grow up. But over time, this is what you're going to get if you open the canopy in a certain location. All right, so here's that same bed from a different angle. Just kind of want to give you guys another perspective of this bedding location. Again, it's not very big, probably only about a quarter of an acre. You're going to see how thick it is. And there could be several deer in here, and they all could have their same space. Another thing I want to show you is look at the sky. You see how this is just completely open sky. Like my camera is getting very overexposed right now, but you kind of get the idea. You need to get full sunlight into this area. And once you get full sunlight into the area, just look at how thick it can get underneath. And this is what deer want. This is where deer want to spend their daylight hours for the most part is something like this. So it's kind of moving through. You can see how open it is, how easy it is for me to get through with this camera. And here's another bed right here. So it looks like a smaller bed. So this is most likely a doe family group. Uh, I think I do see another bed uh, up here. Right here is most likely another bed Yep, I can see some poop in the bed right there. So most likely another bed right there. Another thing I want you to see is once you're in here, look at how you can't see the outside, okay? 
And as you can see, I did help this one out a little bit with the screening. I hinge cut a few trees just so I could help screen off this bedding area so the deer inside felt a little bit more secure. I did that while I was cleaning up one of the entrances and exits. Another thing that I had to do was I had this big tree that fell down and it kind of blocked one of the sides of the bedding area. And it's, it's good for screening, but it also blocked the way in and out. So what I did is I just came through with a chainsaw and opened up a section to allow them to go in and out and they're using it uh, as an entrance and an exit. So you just wanna make sure that you're giving these deer multiple ways in and multiple ways out. And if there's ever a, a tree that comes down that blocks one of your exits, that you clean it up. All right, so we're kind of getting to the other side of the bedding area here. And I just wanted to just kind of bring you guys around a little bit, just so you can kind of see what it's like inside. It's, it's very thick, but there's openings to where the deer can get around. And this is what we're trying to recreate. And it really all starts with the sunlight. Again, if we look up, it's pretty much full sunlight. If you can see through those grapevines that are growing everywhere. And once you let the sunlight hit the forest floor, you know, the sunlight's gonna do the rest. It's, it's gonna be a lot of new growth and you just gotta give it time. And that's where hinge cutting can be such a benefit because you, you can kinda skip a few years while you're waiting for the new growth to start. Your hinge cuts kinda act as this cover. And you just wanna make sure you're giving them multiple ways in. There's another way in and out right there. There's another way in and out right there. So full sunlight, multiple ways in and out. Uh, make sure they are screened off appropriately so they feel safe inside as well. We have a couple more beds right here in the middle. So I think so far I've seen five beds in this really small, maybe a quarter acre size, maybe even smaller than that uh, bedding location. So uh, I just wanted to kind of give you guys an idea on what a natural bedding area looks like. I'm sorry that the video might not be as good on this part. Just kind of carrying the camera around with me. But this is what a natural bedding area looks like, one that's not man-made. And this is what we're trying to recreate when we're making the bedding areas on our property. So hopefully this is beneficial. Um, if you guys have any questions, uh, just let me know. So guys, that was it for going about creating a bedding area on your property. Remember, safety first. If you do have any other questions uh, or comments, please leave those in the comment section below. I'll get back to those as soon as I can, and we will see you guys in the next video.